Hello, and welcome to the November Astrology Forecast. I've decided to go ahead and record these as an audio version because I've run all the charts and I've done all the work. My furniture and equipment will not arrive until sometime next week. I also start back with my clients on October 19th. So the rest of my October schedule is very tight. And so I thought, why not just go ahead and get these done while I'm sitting here waiting for my furniture because I'm ready to go. I love this new area I've moved into. I can see the Milky Way at night. So I'm really excited about what I'm doing. I'm thrilled about the astrology coming up here in November and especially December and 2017. There is a new wave of energy coming in that we haven't seen before that is absolutely uh, brilliant. And so I really want to get, get in here and do what I do. So thank you for your patience. I'll be back in November in front of the camera. And I'm excited to be with you. So let's get started. Enjoy and keep looking up. Hi Aries and welcome to your November astrology forecast. Because I missed October and you had your Aries full moon on October 16th, I thought it would be okay to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, that full moon chart with you. We all get a new moon and a full moon in our sign. Once a year you have the new moon when the sun moves into Aries and now you're having your full moon with the sun in Libra. So you're at that time of year here in October uh, where you're at your half birthday. And so this is an opportunity for you to reflect on how well you've done this first six months since your birthday back in either late March or April. And this is a very powerful full moon here. I'm recording this on the 13th of October. So we're building towards this Aries full moon that's going to happen this weekend. And the moon is coupled with Uranus. And Uranus is the awakener. Uranus is in Aries. The moon is in Aries. Ceres, the goddess, asteroid, is also in Aries. And it's opposing the sun in Libra, Mercury in Libra, and Jupiter has now entered Libra. So there's this push-pull, perhaps tug-of-war, going on between your needs, your individual needs, as well as what others need from you. Now, Uranus is electricity. Uranus is fast and powerful, impactful, and it's, it can be a tornado. It can be lightning striking. It can wake you up and shake you up and make you really look at what you're doing. And so it doesn't mean it's negative. However, things can happen very suddenly. Things can happen overnight where, you know, one minute you're here and the next minute you're in a new place. With Uranus coupled with the moon like this, it can move you uh, where you relocate. It can make changes in your emotional life, your personal life. It's very intense and powerful. So this is going to be the great awakener. And we may see in the world where something comes to light uh, around the presidential election that changes the whole game. Uranus is about truth. And it awakens us to the truth. Uranus is not about comfort or being comfortable. A lot of times people don't make changes because they don't want to be uncomfortable. 
they would rather stay unhappy and where they are than change and move. And so when Uranus comes in like this, it doesn't give you the option. It's either you move or I'm going to move you. And it can move you through, uh, you know, something completing, something ending, something finishing up. However, if you approach it with, I'm open to the new opportunities that are now in my life. I'm open to change. I'm open to do something new. I'm open to relocate. I'm open for a new relationship. I'm open for a new job. I'm open to start a new business. Then this very energy can catapult you to a whole new level. It can move you to a better location than you could possibly imagine. It can bring in a new relationship that's liberating and exciting and freeing. It can give you an idea to start a new company or business, perhaps on the internet, using technology, providing some service to individuals. Uranus is in Aries. Aries is the sign of the individual. And so if you are flexible and open and brave, <laughs> it does require some bravery then it can bring in new and exciting opportunities better than your wildest dreams. It's important to stay flexible. It's important to stay open and ride the wave of change, ride the wave of what's new and dynamic. And when you do that, it empowers you to be in the right place at the right time, making right choices for you. Yes, we must include others. The sun is in Libra. Mercury, the messenger, is in Libra. Jupiter, the planet of expansion, is in Libra. And Libra is about other people. So, you, yes, you, you want to include others in what you're doing. And, you know, if you're coupled then you want to include your partner in what you're doing so that you are communicating what you need, cooperating with others, and that creates the win-win. Mars, your ruling planet, is in Capricorn coupled with powerful Pluto at the time of this Aries full moon. I love this full moon. And this can give you tremendous energy and drive and power you have to watch out though because it can make us obsessed obsessed to win obsessed to get things done and when we're working with other people they may not see it the way we see it they may not be uh, they may not move as fast as an Aries does and so you know, you don't want to run roughshod over other people. You want to make sure that you're including other people in what you're doing so that you are creating that win-win. It's human nature to want to know what's in it for me. So everyone always wants to know, well, what's in it for me? And so when you're working with others, make sure you remind them that when you win, they win. And what's in it for them is, you know, X, Y, Z. So that will be really important to work with this energy because that is an incredibly powerful aspect with the Mars and Pluto coupled together in Capricorn. And that is in the area of your destiny in the world, your profession in the world, your reputation in the world what you do for work. So you can really use October and November to really get ahead with your career, your destiny in the world, your goals, your hopes and wishes. Make sure you're taking others with you. Make sure you're including your partner. Make sure you're including your coworkers so that as you lead them, you are a natural born leader, they are on Team Aries with what you're doing. Very exciting energy. Make friends with change. Change is your friend. This is your full moon for 2016. And 
it holds a lot of promise, a lot of excitement, a lot of passion. However, you know, it can also be like a volcano and it can explode. And so it's important that you are being empathic with others and what they need from you, what is going to create that harmony so that we're all moving together and accomplishing those goals that you would like to see happen. So as you um, experience this full moon in October, it will be really interesting to see uh, how this uh, changes you and what new opportunities it brings into your life, whether it's relationship or job. And remember that full moons bring things to completion, especially when you're at your half year birthday, because the planets in Libra are 180 degrees from you, and that is completion. And so it would be, you know, um, appropriate for things to complete for you at this time. So if you're finding that some things are completing for you, it is appropriate. And that means the universe is clear in the plate, clear in the slate so that you can have new opportunities come into your life. As you enter November, you're in this very special place where you're actually taking your time you're moving more slowly, more deliberately, and you are evaluating your goals. And this is really good to do because it gives you the opportunity to look at, well, what are my goals? What do I want to achieve here in November and December and 2017? Did I achieve what I wanted to achieve so far? What's missing? What do I want to see happen in my life, in my work, in my abundance, in my relationships? So you're moving more slowly. You're moving more deliberately. You're feeling like you're really in the zone, that you're just like, you get it. You know, you're feeling, you're feeling your power and you're not in a hurry for anything. And so it's like you've, you've peaked at that full moon in October, and now here in November, you're going with the flow. You're not in a hurry for anything. And you're really looking at what you're doing, where you're going, and it's super cool. Then suddenly everything changes. And you're hot and you're cold, you're up and you're down, you're in and you're out. <laughs> and you love it because you love the adrenaline rushes that November brings. You love the ride. You love the excitement. You love that roller coaster. And it's exciting because your ruling planet Mars moves into Aquarius on November 8th. And Aquarius takes you to that part of your life that has to do with your goals. It has to do with your friends, your hopes and wishes, the love you receive from others. And so you're very excited about, you know, about eight days in, 10 days in to November. And it's exciting what's happening here for you. Now, the Taurus full moon on the 14th brings you to what you love and value. So by the middle of the month, you are feeling like, okay, what do I want? What do I love and value? What is the most important thing to me? What is really important to me now? How am I using my resources to create my best life? How am I using my money? How am I using my energy? How am I using my time? to create what's right for me. This is an, a wonderful full moon. It doesn't really have any challenging aspects to it. In fact, it is still in positive energy flow with Pluto. 
So it's going to give you the opportunity to look at what you love and value, what other people love and value. The sun is now in Scorpio. And Scorpio takes you to that deeper part of yourself, the deeper mysteries, and shared resources. So it's about what your partner values. It's about what your partner wants. So we're looking at what you want, what your partner wants, and the opposition, full moons are oppositions. So again, you know, is we have this opportunity to play tug of war, uh, or we can cooperate and look at what other people need from us. What do, what does your partner need from you? What do other people need from you? How are you taking care of you? How are you taking care of yourself? What you love and value, what you own, your resources, and how are you sharing with others? How are you sharing with your partner? How are you sharing with your coworkers? How are you sharing with your clients, your customers? How are you sharing with the world? Who do you trust? Who are you letting in? Do you need better boundaries? Are there people cutting over your boundaries, not respecting your boundaries? This is the time to really look at how you're using your boundaries to protect what you own, protect what you have. With your ruling planet in Aquarius, this is the time to try new things, to be progressive, to be future focused. It's wonderful to also co-create with other people, to make that connection with your partner, with your patients, your clients, your customers, with the world. How are you using this energy to create wealth, create abundance? Venus enters uh, Capricorn on November 11th, and that brings the focus to what you're doing in the world, your work your career, your destiny. Mercury enters Sagittarius on the 12th. That is another future-focused energy for you. It's an energy that empowers you to look at what you know, look at what you believe, how your belief serving you. Sagittarius is about expansion of consciousness, moving out into the world far and wide, traveling, higher education, higher learning, philosophy, spirituality, your truth, what's true for you, not what's true for others, but what's true for you. Neptune moves direct on November 19th. That's a subtle energy, but very important. Then the sun enters Sagittarius on the 21st, and we move from deep, dark Scorpio energy into party, celebrating, expansive Sagittarius energy. And Sagittarius is your sister sign. So now we have... Mercury in Sagittarius, the Sun in Sagittarius, Saturn is in Sagittarius, and the new moon in Sagittarius is on the, yeah, the 29th. Now Jupiter is going to square Pluto on the 24th, and that's an interesting energy because with Jupiter squaring Pluto on the 24th, it arouses your ambition to achieve things. The energy can carry you far and wide. However, it can also make us dogmatic. I'm right. I believe this. 
and what I believe is the only truth. And so, so you want to watch out for um, getting caught up in, uh, you know, right fighting or uh, having to be right and uh, having to be the dominant one as far as beliefs go or truth goes or philosophy goes because we all base our truth and philosophy on our life experience and that's going to be different for each person. And so I do like the Jupiter Pluto energy. It is exact on the 24th and then it goes exact again on March 30th, 2017 and then exact again on August 4th, 2017. So this energy is going to be around, you know, for quite some time and it is going to give you a lot of um, drive to be successful because Pluto is in that area of your destiny in the world, what you do in the world. And so a part of you is feeling driven to be successful at your business, at your job, in your school, whatever it is you do that defines you as an individual through your standing in the world, your status in the world is being activated by the Jupiter in Libra right up there to that top of the chart with the Pluto and Capricorn. So this is a very powerful energy and it can also create resistance from other people. And that's why, you know, one of the messages I'm getting here very strongly for you starting in October, you know, at your full moon is make sure you're taking other people along with you. So make sure you're taking others along with you, creating that win-win. Here's how you win when I win. You win because you get your astrology forecast. I win because I get it done, even though it's an audio version and I'd love to be in front of the camera for you. But I'm here and I'm doing it and I'm getting it done. So we both win. It can make you obsessed too, you know, uh, and that that is starting here at your full moon because Mars is coupled with Pluto and Pluto is obsession. Mars is your ruling planet. And so with Jupiter squared Pluto in November, you know, the obsession can continue. So it is, it's good if you're like obsessing about working out or eating vegetables or creating peace in the world, you know, altruistic obsessions are good. But if it's obsession about a person or uh, something that's not good for you, then it's not appropriate and you're out of balance. And so full moons, you know, bring awareness to where we're out of balance. And it brings to conscious awareness what we're doing or what we're not doing. And so here's the opportunity for you to look at where you're putting your energy, what you believe, how that's serving you, or maybe it's not serving you. The Aries, uh, excuse me, the Sagittarius new moon on November 29th, now that's going to be a challenging new moon because it's being squared by Neptune. It's challenged by Neptune. And, you know, whenever Neptune challenges something, we can get caught in fantasy. We can get caught in wishful thinking. We can see what we want to see rather than what's there. And so be aware that by the end of the month, there could be some uh, fantasy going on with you in regards to what you believe to be true. This new moon for you takes place in the area of your life that has to do with what you believe, your philosophy, your truth, your spirituality. And with Neptune there, it's great for doing anything metaphysical or spiritual or creative. So if you do anything with your hands or you write or you sing, 
you dance, uh, cook, whatever it is you do that's uh, an outlet for you of, of channeling creative energy, it's wonderful for that. It's not a good time to make choices that are going to have long-term effects. You know, so it's not the time for you to get married. Uh, it's not the time for you to start your business. It's not the time for you to buy something because what you're looking at, as soon as Neptune lifts off, you know, a few days after this new moon in December, you might look at it and go, ah, that's ugly. I don't even like the color. What was I thinking? It's very easy to do with Neptune because it brings us into other dimensions and other levels of consciousness where in that place, what we're seeing is something else. But then when we get back into groundedness and actually see what it is, we may not want it. We may not like it. We may not resonate with it. So be aware that you really want to pay attention to what you're doing by the end of the month here with this new moon and you know as we move into December and you know the sun catches up with Saturn in December that's the reality and that'll be the reality check for whatever uh, illusions or fantasies we had going on at the end of November with this uh, Sagittarius new moon right because um, on the one hand, you could be birthing a new paradigm, a new way of being, a new truth for you. The challenge is, you know, we have Neptune here, and with Neptune, it can, you know, make us see things that aren't there, or make us put people on a pedestal and only see, you know, through the rose-colored glasses, and then come to find out here in December that the situation wasn't at all what we thought it was. And so, you know, Neptune is very challenging to navigate and he's very strong because he's direct now and he's direct at the Sagittarius new moon. And so it's going to be a very creative energy. However, it's going to be challenging to navigate him and make uh, the best choices. So, you know, the key with this energy is to take full responsibility for what we're doing, for what we're saying, for what we're attracting. And when you do that, it puts you in the driver's seat. And when you're in the driver's seat, you're no longer uh, feeling like the victim of other people's behavior. You're, you're owning your power. And that's the key for all of us is to own your power and make right choices for you so that you are achieving all that you want to see happen here. There's a lot of good energy here for you in uh, December, excuse me, in November and December especially because as the planets move into Sagittarius, Sagittarius is your sister sign. It forms harmonious energy flow with you and Saturn and Uranus are getting ready to start trining here in December and all of next year and Jupiter as well. And this is magic. This is an energy that you can make anything happen. You can achieve great prosperity. You can achieve your highest aspirations. Your dreams come true. Law of attraction is always matching here in November. There's a big focus going on in relationships. So for those of you open to new love, you could be meeting someone. You could be meeting a soulmate. You could be meeting someone who's really good for you. With Jupiter and Libra, people want to help you. People want to see you succeed. And so this is an energy that can bring you new love. If you're already coupled, this can make your relationship even better. This can make the two of you work together harmoniously, work together to achieve your goals, 
really can feel that love from your partner. You can feel that love and that love is there for you and that love strengthens you. It is a time of relationships for you, Aries, because we're in the cycle of Libra and then Scorpio, and that rules your relationship area of life. And the Taurus full moon has the sun in the area of deep intimacy, love, and sex, and sexy. Uh, being sexy, it's exciting. As well as it's important for you to look at what you want, what you want for your partner, what you want for other people. Really, you know, when I ask people what they want, a lot of times they can't answer that when I ask clients, what do you want? So think about that because, you know, with the uh, Taurus full moon happening here on the 14th for you, you're going to have an opportunity to really look at what do I want? You're going to have sudden opportunity for relationship, it, a sudden opportunity for a new start, sudden opportunity for creating a new you. Again, now, you know, with that Aries full moon of yours in October, you know, you're halfway through your birthday cycle and it is an opportunity to really reflect on what you've done this first six months since your birthday. And what do you want to do this next six months till your birthday comes up here? Uh, in next March or April 2017, there will be sudden opportunities for you, sudden breakthroughs. And remember now, if something completes for you in October, it means the universe is saying, move forward. We've got something better for you. We've got a new job for you. We've got a new relationship for you. We've got a new home for you. We've got a new life for you. And it's great. And it's exciting. And, you know, by November, you're going to be ready for it. You may even be ready for it in October, but boy, when your Mars, your ruling planet moves into future focused Aquarius, you're on fire. You're ready to go. You're, you know, you're just like, Hey, bring it. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. So money looks good. You know, it's an opportunity for you to, you know, in November, it's an opportunity for you to look at how you use the resources, Pluto is trining that full moon in that money house of yours. So money looks good. The money is coming through what you do, what you earn, what you own. And that's good. Spiritually, you are growing. It is off the charts here. <laughs> it really is. There's a huge focus going on in the area of your spirituality. So I wouldn't be surprised if you're reevaluating re what you believe or what you were taught as a child. And how does that reflect today? You know, who you are today is always changing. You're always becoming. So what's going on with you now that you are looking at what you believe? What is your truth? What is real for you? What matters to you? You're really looking at that now. And this is important because we don't get what we want. We get what we believe. And so believe in the best for you. Believe in what's right for you. Believe in your truth. This is your magic moment. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, favoring, sharing, and Google Plus in my videos. Aries, I appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. And if you would like for me to take a detailed look at your astrology, it's very easy. You go to my astrology page. The link is below in the show more section. It takes you to my website. You purchase a session upon checkout, you get the link to my schedule and we're working together. Or if you're interested in coaching, that link is below. You go to my coaching page, you purchase a session upon checkout, you get the link to my schedule and we're coaching you. So until next time, Aries, happy half birthday. <laughs> and this is your magic moment.